Hi, my name is Jared Stone, and I am a Senior Technical Curriculum Developer here at Jitterbit. Today, we're going to dive into a tutorial that is part of our Jitterbit Basics series that shows you how to quickly connect to your data systems using the Harmony platform. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to show you how to quickly configure the Epicore connector and create a very basic operation using that connection. Okay, so we start here in Cloud Studio, which is accessible from the Harmony portal at login.jitterbit.com. So once logged in, I navigate to this area, and you can see that I already have a project created here, Epicore to FTP tutorial. Now, what uh, you would have done maybe in the case that this was totally fresh, you would just click the new project button over on the right-hand side and create this project. But I'll go ahead and open this project right now, select view and edit and open that up. So the first thing that we want to do is configure our Epicore connection, okay? So we can come over here to the right hand side in the search bar and just start to type out Epicore. You can see as I type that out it filters it down and I can just select that. Okay, so like most endpoints, we do have to configure them giving the specific information like the host name and instance username and password. So you could do that just by typing that information in, or you can leverage the project variables option just by clicking the, the V over on the right hand side that's in the box. So we can click that. You can see that I've already configured a few project variables here. So for that uh, server host, I'll just go ahead and select my Epicor host project variable. I'll do the same thing for the server instance and the username and password. Now anytime that you're populating information in this particular area, it's always good to test that connection. Basically just to validate and make sure that all of the information you've uh, put in this area is correct. Okay, we see I have a successful connection there at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and click Save Changes there. All right, so now that I've configured that, I need to now select the activity. Okay, so you can see over here on the right-hand side, it's been configured. So now I have six activities to choose from. So what I'm going to be doing is a get. So I'll just click, drag, and drop that over onto the canvas. And you can see as I drop that over, I have an operation that is automatically built for me here, or the startings of an operation, rather. But we can uh, start by maybe renaming this operation. We'll just do something generic at the moment, like Epicor to FTP. And then we'll go ahead and detail into this particular activity to define this. Okay, we can see we start off with the name here, which can be changed, but by default it's just uh, based upon the activity type, which is a get, so it names it get. But that could be changed if you wanted to. Coming on down, we see the uh, the services that we can select, okay? So I'm going to filter these down, and then I'm going to select this one here and click Next. So what I need to do now is select the appropriate Epicore ERP operation. So I'm going to once again leverage this search area to find this object. Select that and then click Next. In the third step here of this uh, particular process, we can give information around maybe the company, the select, the filter, order by. All of this is optional and you can see on the right hand side where you could variableize this and use the project variables like I did a little bit earlier. So I'll just click next to bypass this area. Okay, so now we see the uh, request and response structures here from left to right. Just gives you a little bit of idea of what's going on and then we can click finish. And that right there is how we define that activity. Okay, so now let's go ahead and define the FTP that we'll be sending this data to. So once again, going over to the right hand side, I'll just start to type in FTP and then select that. So now let's go ahead and configure this FTP endpoint. Once again, it gives me the endpoint name there by default, but that could be changed or edited to, to fit whatever you would prefer. Coming on down, we need to provide the host. Once again, I could just type in my host information here or leverage that project variable uh, that I mentioned a little bit earlier. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'll just select my 
FTP host project variable. And coming on down, I'll select the FTP username and then the FTP password. And then I'll go ahead and test that connection again just to validate this information. Okay, so everything's good, so I'll save the changes there. And you can see once again over here on the right hand side where I have defined that endpoint, now I have two activities. Uh, to choose from, read or write. So I'll just be writing some data over to the FTP as text. So let's just go ahead and grab that now and drag and drop that over to the operation bubble. And then I can detail into this. Once again, the name is given to me based upon the activity type. That could be changed. But then we'll come on down here to the file names area. Okay, we'll just do something like result underscore and then we'll do square brackets and we'll say date underscore square bracket time and then we'll just say dot CSV so this will allow us to dynamically get both the date and time at the moment this uh, particular operation runs so we'll uncheck the use FTP rename and then click next in step two, not much to do here, so we'll just go ahead and click finish. So all that's left now is to transform this data. So bring your mouse in between the two endpoints that we've just created. You can see as I brought that over, a bubble comes up with a plus icon that allows me to either uh, create a new script or transformation when clicked into. Okay, so I'll just create a new transformation here. So you can see here on the left hand side, all of the fields that are coming from the ERP system. I definitely do not want all of these fields, so I'm going to be selecting a few of those uh, here in just a moment. But the first thing I want to do is rename this transformation. Uh, what we teach with anything training-wise within uh, Cloud Studio, um, it's really just from a management standpoint, is always name things uh, in a very descriptive and informative fashion. And that goes from project names to, to maybe activities or endpoints, and in this case, the transformation name. So it's always a good thing to do that. So I'll just name this something very, once again, very simple. And I'll just say Epicord FTP. Okay. But like I mentioned, on the left-hand side, this is our source. On the right-hand side is our target. You can see nothing has really been defined on the target side just yet. So we'll click this first bubble that says Define Schema, and then we will select Create Flat. Now what this is going to allow us to do is manually create some target fields. And here in just a moment, we'll map some of those fields from source to target side, and it will allow the data to flow properly, okay? So let's click the Add Field button. And the first field, let's just do, uh, we'll say company. We'll add a few more fields here. Address. City. State. Zip code. and country okay so you could change the type here if you wanted to but nothing to really uh, do here you could also name this okay uh, or rename this right now by default it just says new flat schema which that's fine for the purpose of this but I'll save these changes and now you can see it takes us back to the the transformation area uh, where we're seeing the source and target side so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to click at this upper node here and I'm going to drag and drop over to the upper node on the target side and select auto map. Okay, so what you can see here, there's a few fields that have this purple line on them and basically what that means is that the auto map feature uh, has taken place and that's just based upon the similarity of field names. So we'll just come over here to the uh, the source side and manually map to the target side a few of these other fields like address one we'll take that over to address okay coming on down let's just take zip over to zip code so really simple and now we'll just return to the workflow 
So we define the source, the target, and then that transformation portion, and that is really it. That's how quickly you can uh, configure the Epicor connector and create this very simple operation. So now what we'll do is we'll click these three dots here to go ahead and deploy this. You can see that that was successful. So now what we want to do is run this. So basically execute the operation that we built. Okay, you can see in the bottom left hand side of this operation bubble where it kind of gives us a status check on what's going on. It was received, now it's running, and here in just a moment it's going to let us know whether this process has uh, ran successfully or it's failed. Okay, and there you see the success that comes up. You could also click that and essentially this will just open up an operation log that will give you some details. This is very helpful when you have a process that fails. You may be able to dig into that and get a little more idea as to the reason that the particular process has failed. Okay, but remember for this example and tutorial what we were doing was connecting to an ERP system, configuring that connector and moving some data over to uh, a target uh, area, in this case being our FTP. So let's jump over to the FTP and here is my data right there. And here is the file that comes over. And you can see it gives me some information based upon those fields that I manually created over on the target side back in the transformation. For deeper training opportunities, please check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. You will need an enrollment key to access the training content and you can get that information from either your customer success or alliance manager. And thanks for joining me for this micro learning. We hope you enjoyed it and it's added some value to your integration knowledge.